Okay, well, not, you want to do it kind of like Abbott and Costello. <laughs> what is that? Like back and forth, like a com comedy trio or something. <laughs> <laughs> No. Where's the third person? <laughs> <laughs> the audience? I don't know. I was a college student. Uh, it, it was the af right after uh, I graduated with an English degree. Um, we, we started this company and we kind of designed some of the bags during my, la our last, or my last semester in college. Um, yeah, I worked with my dad. He is a, uh, he's an upholsterer. My dad's an upholsterer and that was my college job, uh, being his seamstress for like five years. I was, I'd been a bike messenger for, uh, quite a few months by then for an attorney's office downtown. Uh, you know, whenever I had a box or something, it'd be difficult with a little backpack that I had. I'd look at this bag and tell Chris, uh, come over to his house and tell him, you know, this is something I want to create just for myself, for work, and uh, then we moved in together, and then we started commuting together. That's where their necessity came in, is once he figured out he needed one, that I needed one, that it was time to sit down and try and make one. So, so we just kind of came up with a few ideas and a, a few different concepts. Um, I don't know, started out with like five. I took them to work and sewed them up, and we started writing them, and we'd get some comments from, from people, and. It took us probably about a year, year and a half to get to the design that we have stuck with since then. It's been pretty perfect, I think. And we had no, we had no idea that we were going to start a business. We were really just doing it because it was a cheap way of uh, getting a bag and using you know, our own resources. And then people started asking them for them <laughs> if they wanted to buy them. So uh, that's how we got started. The place that we, our shop is in is really important to our business and our, I guess really important to our lives too. When we started, it was just the two of us and we were, you know, we were doing all the sewing, all the marketing, all the, pretty much everything, outsourcing a few items like graphic design, but people just started walking in the building and wanting to help and like we didn't, we couldn't pay them, uh, we weren't paying ourselves, <laughs> so, they, but they stuck around and, and came back the next day and came back the next week and came back the next month and, and now we're five people. Yeah, now we've got three dedicated individuals that, I mean, um, are kind of in it for the future. <laughs> We had no business experience, yeah, but we had experience in the market that, you know, that we're dealing in. I had five years sewing experience, and it's not that hard to, like, to, if you have a good pattern to teach someone else to sew correctly. Yeah, being in the bike industry was pretty helpful. Yeah, it was haphazard, too, because I'd never been a salesman, and I had to be a salesman in uh, the, the bike shop I worked at, as well as do inventory and learn how distributors work and uh, what margins were, but mostly just pitches selling a bike and selling to anybody and just getting overzealous and feeling like how oh, I could sell a bike to that person. And that helped a little bit. Not, nothing, nothing like running my own business. Yeah, there's so many problems that you never would have anticipated. It's fun though. My sewing machine is a FAF 545, it's a German made machine, um, it's probably from the 50s, um, generally machines that color are, I bought it used, but we always get our stuff used. But We use shears, scissors, uh, up to like, what, we have like 13 inch shears. Yeah, a lot of people are like, that's really dangerous, wow. I don't cut my finger off with that. But... Got long rulers. <laughs> yeah, yardsticks, scissors, it's just like a craft, it's like any kindergarten crafts thing. We have some glue some tools that uh, sometimes people people see us using them at, like attachments for the sewing machine. They're like, "Oh my God, I, that step looks so much easier without attachment. I can't believe that I didn't know about that." And um, we probably shouldn't show them on the TV. <laughs> It 
it's just crazy how people think of you differently when they think of you as a business owner. Like, they, I don't know. And I, I like the idea that I am a business owner, but a lot of people may not perceive it just uh, aesthetically. Like, it, I'm taking classes right now for marketing, and my, my views is of being a, from being a business owner is definitely different from what people that are in uh, business in the business college that I go at uh, think, and just how it works. And I think that they're I don't think they'll ever know. They'll never know like all the aspects of it and how how arduous it can be. But uh, I think that'll give you a heads up. So you know, one day when I do want to create, you know, work on something that my degree works with, and I'll have that experience. I think I really have a big foot up. Yeah, I mean, the best education is experience. We'll, we'll do like a rush order for someone before they have to leave for a Europe trip or something, and they'll come back with all these photos. Like. And stories. Yeah, I feel it's pretty self-gratifying. And yeah, I give people a pretty good feeling, and then, like, the idea hits me every now and then. We were trying to stay really humble. They're like, our bags are all over the country. They're international right now. And people are walking the streets with our stuff on their back and living out of it. Like, that's a big purpose is like people have to find a purpose for our, the product that we make. I mean, we're always asking our customers to come back and let us see the bags after, you know, what the wear looks like after, uh, you know, eight months of touring on a bike or a, a Europe trip or, you know, whatever the case is. It really speaks for themselves too because some people, it's just like their personality, you like you kind of look at that person and you can know, like, you can know how badly they're going to beat that bag up, like just looking at them, like, and then like when it comes back and like they may have like put different patches on it, like where they've been and just stuff they appreciate. So like each one is like a identity of them. We're not the most touchy-feely individuals in the world, so. We have pretty good space, you know, uh, in between us, so it's not like we ever really bump heads that often. Yeah, we have, we have the, the line of responsibilities pretty well, I mean, pretty well marked, so it, that's, I think that's really the reason that it flows so nicely. Yeah, we're also able, if someone leaves town or needs to take off, that like the other person can take the load for a little bit. If we could stop talking about the future and just get it figured out, we'd have a lot more time to work. Um, we're always speculating on what, <clears throat> what trends are moving, what trends are not moving. Yeah, and uh, you'll hear a lot of companies, and maybe they're more established, will talk about, here's our yearly goal. Well, we have it down to maybe weekly, daily, and then seasonally. And we have a big dream. It's not really a goal, a dream for the year. And because uh, it's going to change, and that's like, it's, it happens when you're owner-operated. It's just like entrepreneurial touch. You, you have to be with the trend. You have to be at the top of it. You have to be at the crest of that wave in order to figure out what's going to sell, well, what are people interested in, what works at this time, what works in this month, what doesn't work in that month. And uh, you have to go with the retail cycle. Uh, a lot of it's just, instinct.